So I've owned my M1 Mac Mini for around two years now. This has been a great machine for creating content, be it editing photos in Lightroom, or putting together 4K videos in Final Cut Pro. In this video I'm going to give you a few key reasons as to why the M1 Mini is still worth buying in 2023, and why I'm not upgrading to the new M2. So the first key reason is price. The M1 was already a great deal, but now the M2 is out you can find used and refurbished M1 Minis at super low prices. I've decided not to upgrade to the M2, as the base model is a fairly modest update on the M1. Whilst the M2 Pro Mini would offer a significant performance upgrade, it's also pushed up the price to near Mac Studio levels. Personally I'm going to wait for the M3 models. These will likely be based on a 3 nanometer process, which should offer a far more compelling upgrade and leap in performance. So all this leaves the M1 as an absolute bargain right now, particularly when you consider the lower price point they will now be selling at. The second key reason is performance. My M1 Mini has a 512GB SSD and 16GB of unified memory, which I think is the sweet spot in terms of specs. 8GB of RAM would be okay if you're just using the M1 for basic office and admin duties, but if you want to edit 4K video and have a decent number of apps open at the same time, then go for the 16GB. It's also worth noting that you can't upgrade the RAM yourself, so it's crucial you get this right at the time of purchase. So I really would recommend getting 16 gig of memory, particularly if you plan for this to be your main machine for the next few years. With the M1 Mini, photo editing in Lightroom has been pretty much flawless. I process lots of RAW files from my Canon R6. Batch editing, import and export have all been executed in quick fashion. 4K video in Final Cut Pro isn't a problem for the M1 Mini either. Editing 8-bit content has been smooth with no choppiness. It definitely helps that Final Cut Pro is so well optimised for Apple Silicon. You simply can't beat that combination of Apple software and hardware working in unison. I think you'd only really need a more powerful Mac if you plan on doing 3D work, or have a more demanding video workflow, but for the majority of creative uses the M1 Mini gets the job done just fine. The M1 Mini has also been rock solid in terms of reliability, and is completely silent in operation. I've never had heat issues or heard any fan noise. Next up is connectivity, which is fairly solid for an entry level Mac. You get two USB A ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and a headphone jack. That should be more than enough for most users to get the job done without any dongles or adapters. The only slight negative here is the lack of an SD card slot. Some extra USB C ports on the front would also be useful. But really these are the only minor complaints I have with the M1 Mini. Lastly, I really love the minimalist design and small form factor. The Mac Mini will look great in any desk setup. I have mine neatly tucked away under my Oakywood desk shelf. As always, I've left links to all the products you see in the description below. I've been using my Mac Mini in combination with the studio display from Apple, which has been a really solid pairing. The M1 chip has no problem pairing the 5K display, I've had zero lag or any other issues. The studio display also has excellent built-in audio, which alleviates the need for any external speakers, so I'm left with a clean looking Mac setup that can handle all my creative work. So to conclude, if you need a capable and versatile desktop computer in 2023, then I can highly recommend the M1 Mac Mini. It offers an accessible entry point into the Mac ecosystem, and the performance per pound is incredible. This is a reliable machine that should also receive full software and OS support from Apple for another few years. In short, the M1 Mini is still one of the best computers you can buy this year. I plan to keep mine until the M3 models come out in a couple of years time. That's a wrap for this video, I hope it helped you out. I've been Tom Hyphen, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching.